speak. What? Okay, so next up is uh, David Sanders from the National University of Mexico and is going to talk to us about uh, guaranteed global optimization. Hi, yeah, so I'm going to talk about how to do global optimization in Julia. And I'm actually not going to talk about constraint today. Uh, some of the uh, underlying technology I'll talk about tomorrow in my talk about interval arithmetic. And this is joint work with my colleague, Louise Bennett, and this is my funding. So what is an optimization problem? Let's remember what it is. It's just minimize something. So we want to find a lower cost or a faster route. All right, so... Uh, <clears throat> In other words, mathematically, we want to find some point which is lower than all the points around it on the graph. So here's an example, and uh, we have some point that starts. So, so how would we actually do this numerically? We usually would do some kind of local optimization where we just roll down the hill, and we are going to arrive by following the, the derivative, the gradient, and we're going to arrive at a local minimum. And we'll just sort of stop there. But as we can see, from our global perspective, actually, there's a better minimum over there if we could just get over that hill. But this is usually hard to do. So if we actually want to guarantee that we found the very best, right? So what is global optimization is find the very best, the lowest minimum or the least energy, the best cost. How can we do that? So, um, so I don't know what's going on with my... <clears throat> so there are some methods called metaheuristic method, methods that, for example, differential evolution, that has a cloud of particles that live on the landscape. And if you find some kind of good point, which is low, then you actually combine those in a certain way, and that it turns out to give you pretty good, better minima. So this is good because uh, you can explore the whole landscape, the whole function graph, in, in many dimensions very, uh, very quickly, and you get good minima. But you can't guarantee that you get the best one. So actually, even if you find the best one, you don't know that it's really the best one. So if you want to really guarantee anything, then you need to use better methods. So uh, basically, the only methods that can guarantee this are based on interval arithmetic. So these are numerical methods that I'll talk about tomorrow that provide guarantees on results. So, oh. sorry. That's, so, for example, let's take the interval of all values between 3 and 4 on the real line, and then we want to take, I uh, want to evaluate a function over all of those points all at once. And so, actually, you can do this, and you can define what it means to apply a function to a set, and what it, we're going to mean is we're going to uh, get back a new interval that will actually contain the whole range of the function over that set. In other words, all points f of x where x is in my set. So in general, I won't get the exact range. I'll get an overestimate of the range. But that's enough for my purposes. So what are my purposes? So here, so we have this package interval arithmetic that does this. So, uh, so I'm going to define a Julia function, x squared minus 2, and a starting point 3 on my, so I'm looking for the global minimum. So I'm going to start at the point 3 and, and call m f at that point, uh, 7. And now I'm going to take an interval, which we rewrite with these dot, dot notations. So that's all of the points between 4 and 5. And I'm going to evaluate my function f over that interval using interval arithmetic. And that gives me some output interval that contains the range of f over that input. And we see that it's 14 to 23 in this case. And that's bigger than my value m, which means that I can actually know that the global minimum is not contained inside this box x. So let's uh, visualize that. So, I'm, so uh, can you see that? Sort of. So, um, so I'm, I'm going to have boxes. Uh, so I'm, the input is on the x-axis. The output is on the y-axis. So these boxes I'm evaluating, and I'm drawing what their output is when I use interval arithmetic. And I'm going to go through, and the red box denotes which box I'm acting on. And I'm just going to bisect them, bisect, bisect, bisect until I find a box which is above my current estimate of the, my current upper bound, actually, on the global minimum, which is this horizontal green line. And when I find a box like that, I'm just going to remove it. Like that. Because I, can, because I know that it cannot contain the global minimum. So if, if uh, when I evaluate in the midpoint of the box, uh, 
if I can't remove it, then I'll just bisect it. And so I carry on going along like that, removing and bisecting, and moving this green line down when I find a new, better value for my global minimum. And so if I do that, what we find is that my boxes start to concentrate around these two points, which are the, apparently the global minimum. But if I carry on doing that process, then it actually finds that over here there's a little piece which is lower down than these global minima. And so when I carry on my algorithm, it removes those boxes and it finds the true global minimum. So that's the algorithm uh, that uses interval arithmetic to do global optimization in principle in any number of dimensions. Of course, in, I'm bisecting, so that's a very bad idea in high dimensions. And tomorrow I'll discuss a, a better thing that you can do. And so. The strength of this is that you are guaranteed to find the global minimum. The weakness is that it's bad in higher dimensions. So we have a good uh, heuristic method that finds good minima, and we have an exact method that finds guaranteed minimum. So let's put, uh, so those, those are implemented in various Julia packages, uh, and uh, ours is this interval optimization at the bottom. And now what we're doing with a GSOC, uh, so, so here's an example of using interval optimization. You just do minimize, you give it a function, you tell it, I want the minimum over the whole real line. And in one second, I think that's just because I didn't rerun it a second time. No? OK. Anyway, it's faster than that. Uh, it will actually give you the global minimum of, sorry? No, it has an S in English. I'm, <laughs> I'm from England, and it has an S. Um, so. <clears throat> Uh, it's just that I didn't import the package. That's why it's not running. Uh, yeah, anyway, so you can also do it in, for example, 10 dimensions, and it's very quick to find the global minimum in 10 dimensions for certain functions. But other functions have a zillions of minima in 10 dimensions, and it's very difficult to find their minima, even with these methods. Come on. I always have trouble with the technology. Okay, so an example is finding the minimum of what's called a Leonard Jones cluster. So this is just some atoms interacting with some certain energy between them. And so we get some complicated energy function that we want to minimize. And uh, okay, the details don't matter. And then, um, so we can, <coughs> oh my goodness. So uh, here's a, an example run of one of my codes. So you can hopefully see that the minimum that is found is just decreasing during the course of the run, as in any optimization algorithm. But the point is that all of this is done in a guaranteed way. And if you run it long enough, then what you get out is this structure for the uh, atomic cluster. This is visualized with Maki. Uh, and it's actually two tetrahedra, one on top of another. There's five atoms making up two tetrahedra. And that is the global minimum guaranteed to be the global minimum structure of this cluster with five particles. So um, now, uh, finally, what we're working on, one of the things we're working on now is this new package called Caribde Optim. This is a re-implementation in Julia of a previous package called Caribde by Charlie Vannery, which was written in OCaml a few years ago. That was his PhD thesis, uh, an MPI. So what it does is it takes this differential, differential evolution, this heuristic method, and the interval method, and puts them together. So it actually runs them at the same time in two different uh, processes and they communicate with each other, and the communication is done with a channel or a remote channel in Julia, which is supposed to be on the next slide. And this is being implemented by Yeshvaran Sherma, who's a JSOC student this uh, summer. And uh, <clears throat> the point of this is that you combine the speed and the, the, the exactness. And so, uh, so this is how you run the, you load the software, you do it in a distributed way, and um, you can run it, and you get out a global minimum, an incumbent, and a list of boxes that are guaranteed to contain the global minimum. And it turns out to be much faster than just using the interval methods. OK, so uh, that's the end. And then you can compare it with, for example, IP op. And you can also run it from jump. Uh, that was here. Uh, and you can compare it with uh, a standard optimizer. And it turns out that the standard optimizer actually gives you a slightly wrong answer because of numerical error. So it actually gives you an infeasible point, the point that you can't actually reach, a value that you can't reach of the, of the function. OK, so that's the end. So guaranteed global optimization is possible in low dimensions. What does low mean? It depends on the problem, actually. 
and uh, we have this new package that should be uh, a lot faster and competitive with uh, the best algorithms for nonlinear, non-convex optimization. Thanks a lot. Okay, so I think we can take like one or two quick questions. Please go ahead. Um, so let's say you had the interval four to five uh, in your example. So are you calculating all the points? Or yeah. So the question is, if I have the interval four to five, and I want to evaluate the function over that box over that interval, do I calculate all the points? And the answer is no, because there are an infinite number of points. So what I'm doing is, for example, if it's just squaring the box, then I square the, the, the lower endpoint and the upper endpoint, and that gives me the endpoints of the new interval. But that only works if the function is monotone, increasing or decreasing. If it's not monotone, then you have to do something more clever. You, you basically just have to split it into pieces that are monotone, and then uh, you take each piece, you find the, the endpoints of those pieces, and you put them all together in the right way, and that's how you calculate the uh, range. Uh, under what smoothness conditions can you guarantee a global, optimiza uh, global optimization of these graphs? The question is, under what smoothness uh, conditions on the function that I'm optimizing can I guarantee the global optimum? And the answer is, uh, it can just be any function using these simple, this simple version of the method. So it can be discontinuous, can have discontinuous derivative, uh, any function, sorry, any function that I can evaluate using interval arithmetic. So that is a certain subclass of functions, but it does include, you can use the floor function, you can use abs, so you can have non-differentiable, non-continuous, piecewise continuous, piecewise smooth, basically. Okay, piecewise smooth, because if it has like a single point that's out, like it exactly equals one, and that's the minimum, you never evaluate on a uh, okay, yeah, so if I have an, a single point which is one, yeah, okay, I, yeah, sure, yeah, you need, you need a little, yeah, so intervals can only do things which work with intervals, so you have to have a whole interval, otherwise, yeah, you can't even see that point, probably. Oh, actually, I'm not even sure about that. Yeah, the new package is not published yet. The new package is guaranteed because it's using intervals in the correct way. But it's somehow cutting out the time. I'm just wondering how it's still guaranteed if it's using the different. Yeah, so basically what's happening is the differential evolution gives you, uh, yeah, I, I didn't actually say that yet. Well, uh, differential evolution gives you a good place where you're checking uh, a value that you think is a minimum, and so you evaluate that using interval arithmetic to guarantee that that sort of value really exists. And if that value exists, then it allows you to already throw away a lot of boxes if they're above that, that place. Like so you found a low place, and now you can throw away anything that's elsewhere that's higher than, that, than it. And so it's just informing, each of them informs the other way, the other in a certain clever way. So it's like better prioritization of the... Yeah, better prioritization, exactly, yeah. <laughs>